Good morning, everybody. It's Stephen here for The Idiot Quilter, and welcome to my weekly episode, episode number 203203, and it's January the 31st, last day of January for 2023. So let's jump right into what I have been working on. And you have seen this before, but it is now completely finished. I have it quilted, I have it bound, and this is the one I call Stars of uh, Hidden Stars. And, uh, you know, this was the one that was a mistake, and I really like it. <laughs> Sometimes your mistakes you like the best. Uh, you can see that I've got it all quilted uh, now, and um, yeah, I'm very pleased with the way it turned out. It looks, I think it looks pretty good. Um, I'm especially happy that I picked that little pop of lime green, uh, limey, greeny, yellow, whatever color you want to call that, just a thin border around the uh, center section of the quilt. I think it really makes everything kind of pop. And I think it also directs your eyes to the center of the quilt. So I'm really happy with the way this turned out. Um, yeah, so what more can I say about it? It's pretty. Okay, moving on. So this one you've seen in various stages as well. It's called Stars of Wonder. It is a pattern. Um, I believe it's a cozy quilt pattern, I think. I think it is. Yeah. Um, and I've been working on this off and on for the last couple of months. Um, I basically have only worked on it at uh, the Club Sews, uh, the Walter sewing class that meets once a month at our club. And um, yeah, and it's also the one that has a mistake in it. But you can't find the mistake unless I point it out to you. And it's a very, very minor mistake. And high praise from Walter. He could not find it again either. But it is there. It's just one simple, small little block that got turned uh, the wrong way. But you know, <laughs> unless you study this really, really carefully, uh, you can't find it. And I'm not going to point it out to you. But it is all quilted, and I'll show you uh, what I did as far as the backing is concerned. This is what I used for the backing, and I did very large horizontal feathers. And the feathers go uh, one way and then the other way, alternate rows kind of a thing. And uh, here's a close-up of these as well. Now, a few times I did run into a little bit of a problem with um, my bobbin. Uh, it was breaking thread a lot. And then I started studying the bobbins a little bit more carefully and found something very interesting about this set of bobbins. You know, at Christmas, Walter bought me um, a whole bunch of glide thread and matching bobbins to go with it. And the first two jars of bobbins that I opened up, they looked a little weird to me. They looked smaller than what I was used to using. And they didn't look like they were wound properly. Um, so I used them anyways, but they did give me some problems. Now, I managed to get around those problems, but I'm not really thrilled with this. In fact, some of the bobbins wouldn't even fit in the bobbin case because they were overwound. So I had to unwind several meters of thread until I could get them to fit into the bobbin case. So I decided I would write to Kawartha Quilting where Walter bought them and just let them know about this and see if this was a problem they had experienced before. Guess what? They have. And they said, just bring those jars back in and we'll replace them, uh, which is great. But then Kawartha Quilting always gives me excellent service. So this was something that I pretty much expected they would do. But they said Philtech wants to know. They're the company that makes glide thread. They want to know when there's a problem like this. So maybe wherever they, Philtech, actually gets their bobbins manufactured, maybe they've had these problems before. Well, obviously they have had these problems before. So the next time I'm up at uh, Kawartha Quilting, I will take in these bobbins and, um, you know, maybe compare them with other jars. The, the thing is, I have used some of them. I made them work, okay? Um, it was very annoying, but I made them work. Uh, the other thing is, I don't know, is it only the, a couple of bobbins in the in the package? I think there's 20 bobbins in each jar. or And then I've got 14 jars of these things. 
So I'm thinking, do I open each of the jars up and kind of scan through them to see if other bobbins look suspicious or what? I suppose I really need to do that. Um, but yeah. And the other thing that upsets me about this is that Walter spent a lot of money on these. These are not cheap. These are not cheap. Uh, he spent several hundreds of dollars to buy me all of this thread. So yeah. So I'll have to investigate it further. You know, if it isn't one thing, it's always something else, isn't it? That's just the way life is. Okay, so let's take another look. Now, this is not my quilt. I quilted it, I bound it, but it is not my quilt. Walter's quilt. Yes, this is one made by Walter. Now, it's called a D Disappearing Nine Patch, and he took a class to make this. And... He made this about three years ago, and it's just been sitting. The top was finished. It's just been sitting in his sewing room under a pile of other things. And he kept saying, I should, he should finish it. He should finish it. And I said, well, I'll show you how to throw it on Lucy, and you can play with Lucy. Well, he never got around to it. So finally he gave in, and he gave it to me, and he said, here, you finish it. He already had the backing fabric all organized, picked out for this. So I got it laid out on Lucy, and he came... Uh, into the Lucy room and picked the design that he wanted to be quilted. Now, it wasn't really the design he absolutely wanted, but I didn't have the other one. And I said to him, I can search for it online and, and pick it up that way. No, oh, no, he didn't want to do that. So fine, this is the one he picked. And I think it goes with it well. Let me just flip it over so you can get a closer look. It swirls. And if you notice in the fabric... It is swirls, circles in the fabric as well. So, you know, a good choice. It complements the design. And uh, it came out very nicely, although that's when I discovered I was having a problem with those bobbins. And when you know it, it would do it on somebody else's quilt. But I persevered. I got it to work. And uh, the final version turned out quite nice. So it is sitting on the couch of honor upstairs right now for a while with a few other quilts. And this is a close-up of the back of the quilt, so you can see what the quilting is like. And, um, yeah, he's very happy with the end result. And he does have another quilt, but it hasn't been finished piecing yet. He just has the pieces cut out and everything. He said, well, give it all to me and I'll finish it. Because he doesn't like quilting. He'd rather be making garments and bags. Okay, so... I think I mentioned last week that I got a new AccuQuilt die. It makes a Cleopatra fan block. This is the Cleopatra fan block. Um, yes, I picked some kind of wild colors for this, but uh, I, I like them. And so I, I made one block and then I decided, okay, I'm going to make this into a table runner. So I did two more blocks, did some sashing, whatever around it. And here's what it looks like. Now, it hasn't been bound, it hasn't been quilted or anything yet. Uh, that's a project for later this week. Um, I have a love-hate relationship with it. And what I mean by that is this is not my usual color scheme. Like oranges and yellows, I don't usually use. Blues, yes, definitely. Um, I'm not sure if the Cleopatra fan block has enough definition. But it was a bit of an experiment. And so... In fact, it was a pattern, a free pattern that came on the packaging for the AccuQuilt die. And that's what I was following. I altered it slightly uh, in its dimensions. Um, the points on the corners, I think, are a little chopped off. Um, I think uh, I would have had... I, I don't know. Things... It's weird because this is a lot of curve piecing and I think the fabric stretched a little on me in some cases. Um, I don't know if I'd make a whole quilt using this design. I might. I might someday. But I have the die. I've made this. This is okay. And once I get it um, quilted, it'll be, you know, it'll look even better. And once you get it bound, you know, once you bind a quilt or a table runner or whatever you're making, once you put the binding on, it takes on a whole new look, you know. So... Don't ever despair when you're making something if you're not completely happy with it and you've gotten to the 
the part where you're about to quilt it or bind it. It's amazing how something you're not really maybe as fond of as you thought you would be transforms once you've quilted it and bound it. Um, there's an expression, you know, that'll quilt out. So that will quilt out. So anyways, before I get accused of using this as a prop, because somebody did, they say, you've always got a coffee cup, but you never take a drink from it. I'm going to take a drink from it. There you go. I really have coffee in it. It's not a prop. Okay. So, um, what's that take me to next? Let's come back here. All right. I have an announcement. You've heard me talk about and show you a subscription box from a Canadian company called Sowers Club that I now get once a month. In fact, my I've gotten two months. I got a December and January's and I showed those on here for you and I'm about to receive February's. I was just notified by email yesterday that it's been shipped and uh, so I will show that to you probably next week. However, in the meantime, I am an ambassador for Sowers Club. I reached out to them. I have never done this before. Uh, I like the boxes I have been receiving. And so I thought, well, I see that they're being um, promoted by YouTube channels that uh, originate from the States. This is a Canadian company. They're in Brampton, Ontario. That's only an hour away from me. Um, so I thought, well, maybe they should be promoting it with Canadian creators as well. So I reached out to them and said that, and they said yes, by sh for sure. So they're supposed to be sending me some promotional information or things like that. But uh, in the meantime, they have given me a discount code of 30% off your first subscription box. They have several boxes to choose from, and you will find the link for Sowers Club in the show notes below. Uh, you will also find in the show notes the... Uh, code. It's very easy code to use for 30% off on your first subscription. And that code is my name. It's Stephen, all in capital letters with a V, S-T-E-V-E-N. And that gets you 30% off. Now, I'm really enjoying the fabrics that this company puts together in this box. And it is curated by yourself to a certain degree, because when you first sign up for the Stash Buster box, they have a project box. They have a stash buster box. I get the stash box, uh, buster box. There are 15 fat quarters in there. Uh, Price-wise, there is shipping on it and tax. Um, so for me, the total is $66 Canadian. Now, before you go, woo, that's a lot to pay each month. But you got to look at what you're getting. You're getting 15 fat quarters. Right now, a fat quarter in Canada, on average is around $5. So that's $75 for 15 fat quarters, not including shipping or taxes. I'm getting 15 fat quarters, quality fabric, for $66. That includes shipping and taxes. So I'm saving some money here. Um, plus, they allow you to say what you want and what you don't want. So there is a checklist that you fill out when you first um, are taking the subscription and it includes what colors do you want or not want, what pattern designs or print designs do you want and not want, um, all that kind of thing. And they pretty much try. So far, I haven't been uh, displeased with the two boxes I have received. Um, so when the third box comes, I will be showing it to you. But in the meantime, they, uh, you might want to try them out. Now, the beauty too is you don't have to take it out for one month, like have it come every month. You can have it every other month or you can have it uh, one each quarter of the year and you can cancel at any time. No strings attached. So given all of those factors and, and how I've, uh, shown you what comes in a box and things like that before I think it's a good value um, so I'm sticking with it and uh, I'll keep you posted on how I like it but in the meantime I think it's worth the effort now for you Americans they do ship to the states 
I'm not sure what the shipping costs, but I don't think it's unreasonable. But the other advantage of this is they're quoting you in Canadian dollars. So the Americans, with the way the um, exchange rate is, our dollar is worth less than the American dollar. So you're going to get an even better deal using American currency. So, uh, oh, full disclosure here, am I getting anything by promoting it? Yes, I am. For every subscription that people uh, go to using my site, uh, they get, uh, I get $8. I was hoping I'd get a free box every month. Okay, I'll be honest about that. But I'm not. I'm getting $8. Um, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to be making a million dollars in a month. Okay, or anything like that. But you know, also, if I didn't believe in a product, I would not, I would tell you that I didn't believe in it. So I'm not steering you wrong on this one at all. But anyways, first time I've ever done anything like this. And I'm very pleased to be doing this because I do believe in their subscription. Okay, moving on. Well, if you're like me, <laughs> you probably have a lot of templates, right? Um, I tend to be a ruler and template junk junkie. And when I first got into quilting, I bought a lot of rulers and I bought a lot of templates. However, you acquire all these templates and it's oftentimes it's a one off, right? Uh, you needed this particular template to make this particular project, but you've never made it again and they're expensive. So I thought I'd do a little video showing you my, what I call my personal template hell. Okay, here we go. Template hell. If you're like me, you saw a design that you really wanted to make, but it had a specialty ruler or a template for it. And so you bought it. And if you're also like me, you have a drawer full of these that were one offs, or in some cases, at least for me, I didn't do them at all. So here, is my pile of templates that some have been used, most have never been used, and they were for future projects. So let's sort through this mess, shall we? Let's start with some of these ones that are in their packages. So for example, these. These are the Twister, uh, Twister Sisters twister rulers and they make a really neat pattern you can see it here on the packaging they're showing it to you and they come in various sizes for making various size uh you know projects so they have the midi twister they have the little twister they have the tiny twister and um, all of these well i've used the tiny twister i think i did maybe i didn't i think it was the little twister yeah little twister where i made a couple of projects using this but I'll tell you this although the final product is really cool these are tedious to use in the cutting and they waste a lot of fabric as well however I have them so maybe down the road I might use them again for something if I feel in the mood for that kind of thing but meanwhile they sit in the little catch-all drawer this one Perfect patchwork templates, the Drunkard's Path set. So this makes a, um, it's a companion piece for making three inch, three and a half inch and four inch units. So small Drunkard's Path and they showed you how to use it. Okay, this is one I don't think I've ever used. Um, I was going to make a Drunkard's Path when I first got into quilting. And then I realized you had to sew curves and I wasn't having a lot of luck with them. It's one of the reasons why I bought this set. And there it sits. I've never, ever used it. And why is that? Well, and, and this is the case for a lot of the templates that I bought. I now have AccuQuilt dies, which make the cutting of the pieces so much easier than having to put down a template and going around it with your rotary cutter. And I don't really have that steady at hand when it comes to doing that kind of cutting. So I have replaced some of the templates that I own uh, with the AccuQuilt die. All right, so that's a few there. Now, this was definitely a one-off. I took a class for this, and I had to buy this template set to create this tablecloth. 
or it could also be uh, done as part of a quilt as they show down here in the little diagram. Um, I did the tablecloth. I'm going to tell you this. This was a challenge. Thank goodness for the instructor. Her name was Cleo, uh, not related to my past cat. And uh, she was an excellent instructor. And thank goodness, because I don't think I would have been able to have accomplished this without taking it as a class. But it's a bag full of templates that you have to have for this. And you can see the price on it, $75 for this pile of templates. So you add that to the price of the, uh, the fabric and to how, how much was being charged for the class. This was an expensive project. And as far as I'm concerned, it's a one-off. I'm never going to attempt to make another one of these again because I really did not enjoy making it. I mean, the end result is very nice and it sits on a round table in my uh, rec room and I love it but I won't go through that hell again. So there we go. I spent $75 for what's basically a one-off, and that's often the way with many templates. For example, I have this pile. These came from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. They make good templates, reasonably priced, if you can wait for the shipping of them. But what's this one? Oh, look, it's another part of a drunkard's path. This is the other part of the drunkard's path. Again, I did use this one once, and it worked out fine. However, so much easier with an AccuQuilt uh, cutter, and that's what I use now. Um, at one point, I thought I wanted to make a tumbler quilt, and these are the templates, again, from Missouri Star Quilt. I have never made that, and I'm not really sure why I have two the same size. I have two 5-inch tumbler ones, and I don't know why that is. Um, these ones are for making a rhombus quilt. Again, never done it. And I have it in various sizes, as you can see right here. Um, again, I think I have two the same size. Two and a half inch. Now, if I remember correctly, there was something, there was a problem or something with one of these. I'm not even sure if it was these. Maybe it was the tumbler. And uh, Missouri Star Quilt uh, corrected the problem and sent me uh, free, the updated version. But these... No, they're not. Okay, one of these is slightly smaller than the other, although they both say two and a half inches. So one must be the improved version. They must have got cut wrong or something. But nevertheless, I've never used them. What's this little devil here? Well, this is another rhombus. That's how come, yeah. No, this one's five inch rhombus. And this one is a, doesn't tell you what size that one is. So yeah, I've got rhombuses coming out of my rhombus. And then I have this template, Simple Wedge. So um, yeah, it must have been for a project I saw that I thought I might like to make and didn't. And this is the half hex ruler. So if you're making half hexagons. Now, again, I have never made half hexagons, but I have the, but I've got the template. I've got the ruler. Great. I'm thinking ahead. Let's take a look at some other ones, shall we? Okay. This one I did use is for the braided twist, um, table runner. Turns out really nice. And, uh, yeah. And I might use this again in the future. If I decide I want to make another one of those, quite frankly, I forget what that T that uh, table runner looks like. I'd have to find it in my pile. Now, the real kicker is this. This one, out of all of these, cost me the most money because it's a system. It's a system for making a mariner's compass. And I've always wanted to make a mariner's compass. Well, I saw this. This is by Robin Ruth. Um, she is the master of mariner's compasses in various sizes and she has a whole system 
And so I bought the entire system, which consisted of two books. Uh, I'm not sure why these two books are almost this. No, they're different. Different rulers. You can see the they mark the rulers on the side of them. So that, and of course, I got the templates and the rulers. Now you can see I haven't even taken the backing off of these rulers yet. Anyone know something? I don't think I ever am going to because I bought an Accu quilt die for doing a Mariner's Compass. Now, mind you, I can only make one size of Mariner's Compass using that uh, die, whereas this I can make multiple sizes. So maybe I'll come back to these someday, but these scare me because I've checked out her videos and she has extensive videos about how to use this system, which are very, very clear, but very, very intimidating. So yeah, this cost me $250 for all of that that you see there. Mm, bit expensive for it sitting in a drawer right now, but that's exactly what it's doing. So do you have a lot of templates as well? Are you a template junkie? Um, I'm not a template junkie, but this is what happens when you first get into quilting. You want to buy everything. And I went down that uh, in that rabbit hole. And that's why I have all these templates that in most cases are just gathering dust in a drawer. Maybe I should give them to somebody. Well, so if I know somebody who wants to make a Mariner's Compass, I've got a kit for you. And that takes me now to the subscribers quilt of the week. And this comes from Alice Willems. I'm not sure if I've ever shown any of her beautiful creations before. I may have. Um, but nevertheless, here's one for you to see, which is very, very lovely. This week's subscribers quilt is from Alice Willems. And she writes, the attached picture is a quilt I made for my niece who requested a no color quilt. Insert eye roll here, she says. Ha ha ha. So this took me away from my crayon box and pushed me into the neutral zone for the first time in my 30 years of quilt making. It is made of fabrics from various manufacturers. The pattern is a modified version of Summer Squares by the Missouri Star Quilt Company. And the long arm quilting is done by Time Remembered Quilting of Macomb, Michigan. Well, this is actually a very elegant looking quilt. And although it may be out of your color palette, I think it works really well. And I think it's the colors that you have chosen that make it look so elegant. Plus the quilting on it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I love the way that you have staged this particular picture because it really does show off the beauty of the quilt with a little natural light thrown on top of it. Um, so this is a beautiful, beautiful creation. Absolutely love it. And thank you so much for sharing it with us. So that takes me to the YouTube channel of the week. This one is uh, a relatively newcomer to the YouTube scene. I uh, just celebrated her uh, first year. Had a great day. I went on to her live. It was a whole lot of fun. And actually, I have interviewed her. And by the time this goes up, you may have already seen the interview. This is with Danny from So Not an Expert. And uh, the thing I like about uh, her YouTube channel is that she's like me. She doesn't profess to be a professional in this field. She shares her triumphs and her failures and her corrections to her failures with her audience. And I very much admire that. So I thought I would check out her YouTube channel. Now, I did this little video of her YouTube channel before I actually interviewed Danny. Uh, but anyways, here's my review of So Not an Expert. This week's YouTube channel is called So Not an Expert. So let's take a look at what the So Not an Expert is showing us. Well, it looks right off the bat like they did a whole lot of Vlogmas and who didn't, but let's jump right into their playlist and this will give us an indication of what it is that they talk about. So besides Vlogmas, they have Tropics, they have the Block Party, Cotton Cuts Fall, Mix and Match, Tower Bridge, so I'm assuming that these ones, like if we take a look at the full playlist here, uh, looks like it's a project. 
Yes, it is. And it's called Tower Bridge. So that's good. Um, projects you can check out. Always great to see different projects to give you some ideas and inspiration. Um, lots of things about cotton cuts. A lot of people love cotton cuts. Um, live stream exclusive projects. So she does live streams as well. Uh, one called the Yellow Brick Road, which must have been a pattern like Tower Bridge. Something called Mix and Match and Tropics. Let's take a look at Mix and Match and see what this is. Um, it's by Donna Jordan. It's a pattern by Donna Jordan. And it looks like it's basically a sew along or something similar to that. So there is a few things here to pick from. Um, and I think it's got lots of potential. Now, this is a relatively new channel by the looks of things. Uh, only has 359 subscribers. So check it out. Help build up the subscriber base because I am sure that the person that's putting this up will have uh, lots more in the near future. And especially if they have more subscribers. So as always, I collect patterns. I mean, I'm like a squirrel with a bunch of nuts. Um, you know, I collect them, I bury them somewhere, and then I promptly forget about them and come upon them a long time later. Well, this is one that really I just recently downloaded. It's called Vintage Texture. And um, I do have it set aside for one that I want to do hmm, maybe this year. We'll see. This week's future project is another quilt that has stars on it. And you know how much I love stars. And this one I saw on a YouTube channel that someone was making. And I went searching for the pattern and I found that it is a free pattern. And it's called Vintage Texture. And I have the link for this in the show notes below if you're interested in picking it up. But I really like the uh, colors in this. Let's just see if we can get a larger image of that there it is and as i said you know how fond i am of stars but i really like the way this one sort of does a gradient from top to bottom diagonally and also the various sizes of the stars now this looks like a fairly quick quilt to put together although it looks too like it's got a lot of half square triangles but that doesn't bother me but um, I think it's going to be a really neat pattern to do. And so I have that as a future project. And I look forward to doing it at some time in the future. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I did interview Danny from So Not an Expert. Had a great interview. She is a lovely person and a lot of fun. And as I mentioned on Saturday this past week, she was celebrating her first year anniversary of being a YouTube tr creator, of having a YouTube channel. And she did a sew along kind of thing or a live. I was on it for most of the time she was on. I had a great time. It, she had contests and giveaways and just it was so much fun. In fact, I sat down to do something that was going to take me an hour. It took me two hours because I was having too much fun on uh, her YouTube channel. So I have her interviewed. The interview is up. The link is in the show notes below. But here's a little teaser if you haven't seen the interview yet. So Becca has mm -hmm. been another amazing influence, especially with regard to my channel. Um, the very first video that I caught of her... Um, she was making up, she was trying to make a project and she was just, she was just completely blocked. You know, we all, we all get there. We have this, this momentary blockage of, we just can't figure out what we're going to create that day. And we want to create something because we know that it's going to help us, but we just can't seem to figure out what it was. And she, she was on her live stream and she was blocked. She just, she didn't know what to do. She didn't have any ideas of what she wanted to do. So she just started sewing and she had some other stuff going on in the background of her life. And you know, and, and I've, I've experienced this myself, you know, you, you sit in front of this machine and you have these other influences around you. And before you know it, your, your emotions are taking over. You're not really creating anything, but your emotions are just taking over. And, and this becomes your therapy room. This becomes your, your way to let go of those things that have, have happened outside of this room. Um, and she did that on a live stream on her camera. On, she, she, let herself go she let herself be vulnerable she let herself be real and i admired her for that i i 
looked at her and I thought, well, you know what, if she can do that, if she can be that vulnerable on the camera, then I think that I can actually do this because I, I can't put on a brave face. I can't. And as you know, uh, come June, I will be out at on the uh, out in the east coast of Canada uh, because of the Canadian National Quilt Show, and that's in Halifax. And I thought, well, I'll be spending three days in Halifax, so why not check out what uh, quilting stores there are in that area and what they have online. So I did, and this one is called Patch. Halifax. This week's online quilt store comes from Halifax, Nova Scotia, which is a destination that I'm going to very soon, uh, in June actually, for the Canadian National Quilt Show. And while I'm there, of course, I'm going to do some shopping. So here's one that's located right in Halifax, where I'll be, called Patch Halifax. I have never heard of this store before. I just did a search for quilting stores in the Halifax area, and this was one that came up, so I thought I would explore it. So this is their front page, and as you can see, they have a picture gallery happening um, here as well. Let me just roll up a bit. Oh, I guess it's not gonna let me roll up a bit. So um, they do have a newsletter, and if you sign up for it, you'll get 10% off on your first online purchase. Let's get rid of that. Let's see if this will allow me to scroll. There we go. So some pictures of the store. They have fabric, classes, rentals, patterns. It's in the heart of Halifax. Our little fabric shop and sewing workplace is the perfect place for those seasoned at sewing and those just starting to take up the needle and thread to meet. They offer workshops, patterns, DIY books, fabrics, notions, rentals, craft and embroidery supplies and they give you a little bit more information about them as well. So let's jump right in and check out their shop and check out what they have for fabric. So fabric is subdivided into quilting quality, qu quilting quality, quilting cotton, I mean, holiday themed, Kona cotton, knits, Liberty of London. Oh, they have Liberty of London, uh, rayon, tensile and silk, linen and canvas, denim, Japanese fabric, outerwear, bolt ends and sails. So it looks to me like they sell more than just uh, quilt making uh, fabric. They also sell garment fabric. So let's check out the quilting cotton. And here we go. So right off the bat, it looks like it's $23 a meter for everything. Um, let's just jump in here to another spot well if it's a if it's a Kona cotton solid it's only $14 a meter which is a good price $23 a meter is definitely on the high side and I'm just springing around here at random um, more at $14 a meter but those are solids so let's go back up here to the shop and to the fabric and um, let's look at Liberty of London because Liberty of London usually is an expensive oh my Gosh, I know Liberty of London is expensive, but holy crap, $50 a meter? Yeah, I have never seen it that high. I've seen it as high as $30 a meter, but $50 a meter? Yeah, you've got to really love Liberty Fabric for that. Okay, well, let's take a look at um, Holiday Themed. Uh, right now, it looks like some of this is on sale, $11 a meter. Okay, there might be something here, a lot of novelty prints kind of a thing. Not a lot to choose from, really, but then again, it is seasonal. Um, I still want to explore this fabric just a little bit more here because do they have... Okay, it looks like they had a sort feature, sort by the latest... Sort by price, low to high. Okay. Okay, $21 a meter. Okay, it looks like with the exception of Kona solids that their prices range from $21 a meter to $23 a meter. And of course, Liberty at $50 a meter. So, um, yeah, they're expensive. This is not a cheap store. So if I do go in and check it out, and I may, I don't think I'm going to be buying very much there. 
but maybe they'll have some sales in store that uh, they don't list here so I could check that out they have kits and bag making and Christmas socks okay so not a lot there um, patterns and books so they have garment books uh, sashiko uh, lots of patterns for clothing making now I did see though when I was up in here uh, quilt patterns let's check that out three yeah none of those are grabbing me so not really a lot there to choose from either uh, let's check out their notions buttons zippers and hardware labels okay so it looks like they're really more into garment sewing here than quilting uh, craft and embroidery cross stitch sashiko natural dye kits gift certificates okay it would seem to me that this particular store is geared more to your garment sewer not as much to your quilter um yeah it's that's disappointing that's disappointing because i was really excited about uh possibly going there i probably still will go walter may find stuff that he likes as well um now what's their shipping like let's see what their shipping policy is um refunds privacy terms <coughs> hmm they're open every day of the week not bad hours either that's unusual because a lot of uh quilting stores at least in my area aren't open on sunday or mondays so that's good to know okay maybe under their faqs there's about shipping Um, uh, they're not an authorized sewing machines, uh, seller, but they like Bernina machines. Okay. Uh, do they service machines? They don't. Do you print large scale PDF patterns? Again, this is definitely for the people who make garments. Uh, they don't do that either. And do you make patches? Nope. They don't do that. They don't do a heck of a lot, really, by the looks of things. I am really disappointed in this online shop maybe there's more in their store um and i'm still not finding anything okay they do have classes let's check out their classes um again bags garments not really much here in quilting line so I am thinking that this particular store is definitely a fabric store that's geared towards garment sores, not so much quilters uh, with this. And maybe that's what they said somewhere, but uh, I didn't really notice that. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out what their shipping costs would be. So I guess I'm going to have to fake a sale here. So we'll go into quilting cotton. Uh, we'll take some of this. Got it in there. Uh, back to cart, view cart. Uh, oh, it's a flat rate, fifteen dollars. Oh wait, now shipping to Nova Scotia. Okay, change address, Canada. Let's try Ontario. It's still a flat rate oh wait oh that's a half meter okay they list the price and um, on a meter but when you order it it's a half meter so let's update the cart we're going to put in a meter so it's still a flat rate of fifteen dollars so that's okay let's just see if it was if that's if i ordered that much still a flat rate of $15 so actually that's pretty good on shipping um and it's come up here with a warning that I've got too much there's only one available of that particular one but that's okay okay let's just get rid of that so 
overall, Patch Halifax, since I'll be in Halifax, I may pop in to check it out, but to order from them online, nope, I am not. It doesn't impress me much. Uh, prices are way too high, although their shipping is very, very good. Um, I think maybe more so if you are a garment sewer, you might want to check this out uh, for yourself. But as far as quilting is concerned, I don't really think so. So that's Patch Halifax. So that takes me to what's coming up. Well, tomorrow, February the 1st, 2023, is the first Wednesday of the month, and you know what that means, Craft and Chat. Those of you on my mailing list for it, I've already gotten the Zoom link. For those of you not on the mailing list, you can still join us because the Zoom link's in the show notes below. It starts at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, and it'll run till about 4, 4.30ish, that kind of thing. Come and join us. Uh, every month that I have this, we're growing in our numbers. Everybody seems to have a good time. We get a lot of things done. We learn a lot from each other as well. And well, I like to call this group, especially the regulars, my enablers, because somebody always shows me something they've just acquired and I go, ooh, gotta have. So usually Craft and Chat costs me some money. Um, but it is fun. I look forward to it. Um, it's a great time. So don't be shy. If you've never joined up with something like this, hey, give it a shot. This group is very supportive, very friendly. All are welcome. And do you have to be a quilter? No, you do not. You can be anything. You can be a crafter. You can be a paper crafter, scrapbooker, knitter, crocheter, sewer, um, whatever. Whatever floats your boat. If you just want some time with some like-minded, creative individuals, then Craft and Chat is the place for you. So as I said, it's tomorrow, February the 1st, starting at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Okay, and what else is coming up? Well, of course, tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock, Eastern Time. Stephanie and Stephen's sew along. We're getting pretty much close to the end of that sew along. It's gone by very, very quickly. Um, tomorrow we'll be taking a look at everybody's progress. Um, I'm going to show you my completed version of the quilt that we've been working on. Actually, I'll show you the completed top. Um, now I have to quilt it, uh, of course. And uh, we'll be talking about finishing tips and tricks as well. So those of you that have been joining us uh, on a regular basis, you know what we're going to talk about because you were there. But if you can't make it, because there are some people who like work, <laughs> go figure that, right? Um, you can catch it on the rebroadcast. Is it too late to join in? No, it is not. Um, you can join at any time because of the rebroadcasts. They'll be up there pretty much permanently. Pretty much they will be permanently on my YouTube channel and on Stephanie's YouTube channel as well. So if you want a new project to start, but you can't start it till next month, you can come back to those. Uh, and although they're not live, they still have all the same content. So yeah, so it's never too late. Never say never. Okay, and Walter and I have a sew day coming up with his uh, sewing class at the club because uh, it's the first Saturday of the month. So I have a project, a um, new project that I'm starting, and uh, I hope to get a fair ways into that project on that day. Um, it's nice to go to those because I meet new people. And although there's not that many people that show up to it, um, it's kind of interesting because they're working on garments and things like that. For the most part, I'm working on a quilt. So, you know, you can learn from somebody who's not doing quilt sewing, who's doing regular sewing. And I'd like to think they can learn from me as well. So it's a sharing of ideas. And it's just, it's just something that breaks up the everyday routine. So I look forward to these days uh, as well. I think I'm going to take my sewing stool with me, uh, my travel stool, because <laughs> the seating in this hall is not conducive to sewing, I find. I find the tables are a little high, the chairs are a little low, and, uh, you know, so you're, you're sort of sewing up here. You know, your nose is right about here with the needle. Um, so I'm going to see if we can get in the car my sewing stool this week, um, because it'll make things a little bit more comfortable, I think. And, you know, you want to be comfortable. Okay. 
Well, that's it for me this week. Uh, I hope you have a great week. Um, do check out Stephanie and Stephen's uh, Sew Along tomorrow if you get a chance. Um, I need some topics for Sew Topic this coming Friday. We didn't do it last week because it was Walter's birthday. And to, to be honest, we didn't have a topic. And I'm still trying to figure out what we're going to talk about. So if you've got some ideas, please, 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 immediately, after you've seen this, put them in the show notes below or send me an email because I'm desperate. I'm desperate. Okay. Have a great week. Go out and create something beautiful. Bye for now.